What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We're taking a look at the new Razer Edge handheld gaming device here. And much like the G Cloud, this is targeted toward the cloud community. It also streams consoles quite well, plays Android games, and of course some emulation. And we'll take a quick look at all these things in a review here as we take a deeper dive into the Razer Edge. Now, first, let's take a look at the specs we're dealing with. I have the Wi-Fi model here, which is about 400 bucks with the new Snapdragon G3X Gen 1 chip, 6.8 inch screen at 2400 by 1080. It's an OLED screen at 144 hertz, six gigs of RAM, that's LPDDR5, 120 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD support, two-way speakers, two digital microphones, a front-facing 1080p 60 camera, 5,000 milliamp hour battery, Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, USB Type-C, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the controller itself, not over on the tablet. And of course, this is a two-piece device with a new Kishi uh, version 2 Pro here and their tablet, the Razer Edge, which has active cooling and that new chip and all that. Now getting closer into it here, your micro SD slot is on the bottom. You do need to eject that. We've got our USB-C and our headphone jack at the bottom as well. We've got our volume buttons and our power button at the top and typical triggers and programmable third buttons there as well. Other than that, you're looking at the Kishi and a tablet here pretty much put together, but it feels really nice to game on. And myself, I really prefer for dedicated handheld devices. We've also got that active cooling here in the back and it's not loud by any means, but you can certainly hear the fan come on and it does a nice job of keeping the device cool and thermal throttling down, which is a good thing. Now, taking this out of the controller, you can see we've got our nice little tablet here and there may be some touchscreen games that you prefer to do this with. So it's kind of a nice feature, I guess, that this is a two piece device, though I would normally prefer it be one. The speakers are on either side rather than on the bottom where I might like to see them, but they are plenty loud enough and there's cutouts in the Kishi so that you can still hear them fine. So it's no big deal. I just typically like bottom. Looking at the new Razer Kishi here, this is the pro model as you can see. And from what I understand from CES interviews, this is only available when you get the Razer Edge and won't be sold by itself till possibly towards the end of the year and maybe for around 150 bucks. That would mean the tablet here is about 250 bucks and the Kishi Pro would be around 150 for our $400 price tag on the Wi-Fi model here. But no complaints, pretty used to the Kishi here and it works very well with this Edge tablet. Now, when you're clicked in here, just like a phone or anything else, it does have a little bit of play and movement over on the left side. It's not bad. I do have to push pretty hard to make it happen. The flex in it is pretty normal for what you would see on a controller like this, but when you're just gaming and treating it normally, it feels solid enough, and I haven't really had any complaints, even with my bigger hands on here trying to, to grip this, what I would call a fairly small device for me, but probably quite comfortable for a lot of people. But well-built and nicely designed here by Razer. Now, let's, we have our little button here to switch between our gaming mode, so you can kind of see all the little games and things that you have selected here. You can control what you see in this row, and it's a really handy button just to swap back and forth between the normal OS and the game mode. As far as settings, I don't want to go too deep in here. It's Android. You're probably fairly familiar with this, but I do want to go into the display and show you the options there. Battery life we'll talk a little bit more about later. And of course, you've got your storage of 128 gigs internal there. But when we go into display, we can go all the way up to 144 hertz here for our display which is really nice and it's made for a really smooth experience of course you will burn through battery a bit quicker and like i said we'll talk more about the battery life i got through everything here as we get farther in to the video but that's really all i wanted to go through in the settings not a whole lot i want to go in here just pretty typical for android and i won't spend a lot of time in here now getting into the games the screen really is gorgeous of course being oled we have the inky blacks it looks really nice the colors pop and it's 144 hertz so jumping into an android game like this like asphalt 9 looks gorgeous and running this in any mode from performance or the higher graphics quality or whatever i don't really have any problems now not that this game's super hard to run, but it is fast motion, has a lot going on, and just showed me that the screen, the refresh rate and everything was working really, really well. Picture stays nice and clear, motion is nice and clean, and it's really a pleasure to just play it on this device overall. Again, the colors just pop on the OLED display, the widescreen format looks really nice, and when you're in person with this device, it feels great to game on. Now jumping over to something like Fortnite where performance would mean even more, especially when you're in PVP, right? So the performance here is great and the picture quality again 
is amazing for the Android game on this OLED screen. And we're running the game here at 90 FPS mode. I was getting capped at 75 quite often. Maybe you guys can give me a heads up as to why that was. But uh, yeah, I had it in low settings with 90 FPS mode, 144 hertz on the screen, and everything felt nice and responsive. It looked great on here and felt great to just kind of run around and play. I didn't really get to get into any kind of crazy battles or anything during the time that I was recording, but it was nice just to see how the game was running. And I could hear that fan kick on in the back playing some Fortnite locally here. But again, it's not super noisy. It's much quieter than something like a Steam Deck or something, but you do hear it. It does have that active cooling, which is a good thing because with that new chip, we get a lot of good performance and it does help keep things cooled down a bit. But Android gaming was a pretty good experience. I tested a lot of other games as well, and this thing's going to pretty much chew through those. All right, time for some cloud gaming, starting with Xbox Cloud Gaming. I use this service a ton since I am an Xbox gamer a lot of the time. And of course, running on the Android app here, Xbox Cloud Gaming is running really well for me. Now you will notice because we are running console games at basically a 16-9 ratio, you're going to be cut off on the sides there and Xbox Cloud Gaming won't take full advantage of the wide screen. But it still plays really nice. It was quite responsive here on my home Wi-Fi and even tethered to my phone away from the house a couple of times. And of course, with the OLED screen, we're still getting a gorgeous display here. So I'm willing to deal with those little cutoffs. I think it works really well here and no real big complaints. And I'll also say, if you haven't tried Hi-Fi Rush yet, it's really worth it. This is a game that I'm having a lot of fun with and it was the game I used mostly to test here on the edge. Now, another cloud gaming service I want to go to is one of my favorites, of course, GeForce Now. And I'm on the ultimate tier here, which, depending on where you're at, will give you access to a 3080 or 4080 right now. And we'll jump into some cyberpunk. And I got to say, from all the devices I play GeForce Now on, this has been one of my favorites so far this week, testing out GeForce Now and having it take full advantage of the wider screen resolution. And not only that, we're streaming at 120 FPS. And while the 3080 here isn't running, the game itself at 120 right now until I get the 4080 on here with the uh, DLSS 3 and all that it is still super smooth and really nice and a lot of games you can play at 120 FPS so having that 120 FPS stream here on 144 Hertz screen with the widescreen it makes for a great cloud gaming experience with GeForce now on the Razer Edge again I think it is one of my favorite devices or favorite handheld experiences right now for GeForce Now. And again, when you're in person, uh, really just trying it out and having it up close, uh, it's really nice. So I'm not always so praising of things like that, but this is something that I've really been enjoying this week with the device. Now, one other thing I do want to take a look at is Shadow PC, which of course being a PC takes advantage of this screen real estate as well. And it works great here on the edge. It's been a lot of fun to have access to Shadow here to play games, to use the Windows PC there in the cloud right on the edge, and it's all worked really well. Now you got like a 3070 GPU equivalent here with the Shadow along with some other things, but it runs pretty well. And being able to take advantage of the screen real estate and everything, just like GeForce Now, made for a great experience. All right, let's jump over and take a look at a little bit of emulation before we wrap it up. Okay, so I didn't go too deep into emulation yet. I'll probably do some more of that, but getting into something classic like Super Nintendo or Genesis or any of those games, of course, are going to run just fine on this device. I haven't had any problems jumping in and playing any of the classic games from back in the day, and that's been a really nice experience here on the edge and with the screen, it looks really nice as well. Jumping into something like the N64, also being able to change the resolution. At one point, I even had all of the screen real estate taken up and everything looking really nice and maintaining good performance there with a few different games uh, for emulating the N64 as well, just through RetroArch through uh, the Android store. Same thing for Dreamcast. I jumped into a few different games, Sonic being one of them, and no major issues here either. I'm looking forward to testing a lot more emulation with this device because I think it's going to be capable of some pretty great emulation. I'm looking forward to trying some harder to run stuff and newer stuff. I only really went as far as like PS1. I think I did some PS2 stuff the other day, um, was working well, but I, I want to dabble in some newer stuff with this device as well. Also got into some uh, GameCube, just jumping into some uh, Blue Storm, and I checked out some other games as well, Luigi's Mansion and stuff like that, all running at their native FPS. And all those games loaded up fine, ran fine, no major stutters, crashes, hiccups, or problems with any of the emulation just from these platforms and games that 
uh, we're kind of giving it a try here. It's been a lot of fun with the Razer Edge to mess with emulation. I actually haven't done it in quite a while, so kind of getting back into it on this device has been a lot of fun. And being able to remap for the Wii as well and jumping into some games, I had a lot of luck there. Um, didn't take me too long to get set up and get things going. And again, for a game like this, not super hard to run necessarily, but able to maintain pretty much the 60 FPS experience here with Mario jumping around. So I had a lot of fun with emulation, didn't get super deep into it. I do plan on getting into a little bit more. It's been a lot of fun with this device and it's kind of made me excited to get back into it. Now, as far as battery life, I've been averaging five to eight hours, really depending on what I'm doing, falling around six hours a couple of times. So I think depending on your usage for local gaming, emulation, streaming, and all of that, it's really going to depend. I'd say it falls somewhere between the Steam Deck and the G Cloud when it comes to that. One of my gripes is we don't have an update yet for the Nexus app, so you can't control like touch control only games with the controller yet like you can with the new update you can force the update but then your nexus button to swap back and forth stops working so that's really the only major gripe i've had with the device honestly the past five days or so with it um, i haven't had any problems with it it's just worked even with emulation and everything with cloud gaming with local games everything has just worked very smoothly here for me for the razor edge so with all of that being said, who's this device for? Well, if you're someone who just likes gaming on your phone or throwing a controller on your phone and you're good to go, then really none of these handheld devices are necessarily probably for you. But for people like myself and others who prefer a dedicated gaming handheld device and not tying up our phone for whatever the reason may be, I think that this is a pretty decent Android gaming device with some decent specs. It's been great for emulation, cloud gaming, remote streaming of my consoles, and local gaming of Android games. And I think all in all, if you're looking for something that can do everything like that and do it pretty well, and for a price tag of around 400 for the Wi-Fi model, then the device is probably something that you want to check out. Hopefully this video gave you kind of an idea of if it's something you would be interested in. I know that I'm really enjoying my time with it. I hope I continue to, and I'll probably have some more videos for you guys when it comes to the Razer Edge here. But as always, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.